Hello! Today we are going to talk about a very interesting matter. We are going to talk about respiratory viruses. You have to know that there are a very large number of these viruses. The most part of them belong to the Automyxoviridae family. In fact, we are going to talk about it later. The respiratory viruses are transmitted in a horizontal way. It means with a close contact with other infected people. Essentially, they are transmitted by respiratory droplets that are emitted during cough, cough and sneeze. When you cough, you free a number of 3,000 droplets. Uh, at about 75 km per hour and at 2 meters of distance. When you sneeze, on the contrary, you normally free about 40,000 droplets at 320 km per hour. So imagine how many viruses you get when someone coughs or sneezes in front of you. So be careful and try to put your, re, try to remember at least to put your hands in front of your mouth and just try to convince them, to convince the other people to do the same. Respiratory viruses uh, normally cause respiratory symptoms, but some of them are able to invade your organism in a systematic way so they are able to cause other general um, non-specific symptoms. So let's talk about the Automyxoviridae family and the influenza virus afterwards. Uh, the viruses belonging to this family have a um, single strand RNA genome. This strand is also segmented and uh, in particular uh, the strand is segmented in eight fragments inside eight different nucleocapsids. These nucleocapsids are then coated with a single pericapsid. Then these viruses also have a viral specific RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. Then, what can we say about them? We can say that the transmission of the viruses of these viruses starts um, uh, at the time of the infection, and they and they last for about one to four days after the symptoms considering the fact that the symptoms start after about one, two or three days after the contagion. These viruses are about 80 to 120 nanometers big and they have a lot of important surface antigens like hemagglutinin, which is able to bind red cells, for example, and neuraminidase. There are 14 different kinds of hemagglutinin and 9 different kinds of neuraminidase. But in human beings you will find type 1, 2, 3, 5 and 7 of hemagglutinin and type 1, 2 and 7 of neuraminidase. The viral container is represented by migrated birds that come from China especially. So let's talk about the influenza virus. There are three kinds of influenza virus. The type A, which is the most common and uh, that you find both in human beings and in other mammals. The type B that you you find only in human beings and the type C that you can find both in human beings and in the pigs. The mortality is about 
0.03 to 1.17%. And another important thing is that the symptoms are really general. Uh, one of the most common symptoms are, of course, temperature, high temperature, uh, general malaise, so general feeling ill, bone and muscular pain, uh, then nausea or, um, for example, headache and other general symptoms. Um, in children, you may also find intestinal symptoms, while in old people, you may find a not so high temperature, because in old people, the immune system is not so efficient. Which are the main complicants of an influenza syndrome? The main complicants could be, for example, a bacteria superinfection, pneumonia, or myocarditis, pericarditis, or myositis. Then there could be, for example, a Guillain-Barré syndrome, which is characterized by lower limb paralysis, while Rye syndrome is typical in children, in children who are um, administered with aspirin during an influenza syndrome. So be careful, don't give drugs to your children without asking to your doctor. How to protect yourself from the influenza syndrome? Well, you need to be careful, for example, when you, you don't feel very well, what do you have to do? When you don't feel very well and you suspect being infected by this virus, you first of all you have to stay at home. You don't you don't have to go working, you don't have to go to school, you don't have to go outside and because the important thing is not to spread the virus. And if you are obliged to go outside, for example, if you work in a hospital or if you work in public services, you should wear face mask or gloves. Then you can get the vaccination every year uh, in October or November, depending on where you live. And then, of course, you always have to clean your and to, to wash your hands to clean your body and wash your hands and then another important thing I I told you about it some lessons ago an important thing is to cure your hands and not to touch your face with your hands so often because you touch a lot of things during the day with your hands and if you touch an infected surface and then you bring your hand on your face, on your mouth, on your nose on, or on your eyes, then the probability to be infected is really high. Don't take drugs without asking your doctor. So, see you in the next lesson. Bye!